Well, good morning and welcome to James with Jesus on this Monday, January 18th. Um, for those who have the federal holiday of MLK Jr. Day, um, that is today. Um, I saw a, a, about a two minute or minute and a half video clip that I'll, I'll share as a, um, I'll share in the comments section or the, when I post this video, but it struck me about beauty and so today's scripture is Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength you establish the mountains, you are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have pre prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. So this really does speak to the abundance of God's creation. Um, I, I mentioned I've, I've restarted the Master Gardeners class that uh, was interrupted last year because of COVID. And um, I just realized the camera angle, I'm about half in the shade and half in the sun. So there we go. Uh, so, whoops. So that's, um, we were discussing soils last week and we'll, we'll progress and that's very interesting to me. I've been looking out my garden or in just the different plantings and see that crocus are starting to poke their heads up a little bit, even some daffodils, um, the hellebore, the Lenten roses are blooming now are starting to bloom. So uh, even in this mid-January, things are beginning to prepare for spring. But the beauty that I, I saw, this video clip I saw yesterday, was of a person who's colorblind and his friend had bought him the glasses that allow you to see color. And his name is Mac. And um, when he's given these glasses, he's outside, there's a, a beautiful red Mustang in the front. There's a, a, a metallic burgundy truck off to the side. It's a clear day, so a blue sky. And when this gentleman puts on glasses and sees color, for the first time, he is just overwhelmed, overwhelmed with joy, ecstatic. And one of the things is he can't believe that the rest of us were seeing this all the time. So what I take for granted, what others take for granted to be, to see color for the to go as Renee said from nothing but shades of gray from white to black shades of gray that's your world to all of a sudden seeing this cherry red Mustang to seeing this vibrant blue sky and he just everywhere he turns is amazement and then he bows down and picks up a single leaf a single leaf and is blown away by the colors he sees. And um, it just encapsulated how much wonder and mystery and awe is all around us every day. And yet, for those of us who get to enjoy it every minute of every hour of every day, we can lose that sense of awe. But to see it fresh from somebody else's eyes is truly astounding. 
Uh, today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and so uh, whether that um, gives you added time for reflection this day, um, we'll be participating, Pastor Josh and a few of the students, and I will be going out to the Habitat Build site and putting in a few hours of work there. I'd like to um, revisit Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail. If you've never read it, I would highly encourage you to because I think it speaks to much of the challenges that we still face today and in his day. And, and the, the general crux of the letter was that his enemies were clear and that he understood, but what he could not understand were the moderates who failed to rally to the cause for justice um, in our complacency would sit on the sidelines far too long instead of joining in our sisters and brothers in Christ um, and others simply seeking justice, um, desiring equity. Um, so letter from a Birmingham jail, I'd, I'd highly recommend that. And then I was convicted several years ago by a phrase um, that I like to imagine myself as probably most everybody else does is thinking that, well, I would have been one of the courageous ones. I would have been with Bonhoeffer in Germany speaking out. Um, I would have been one marching alongside Martin Luther King Jr. Um, but I came across a quote that was very convicting and it said, if you are not marching with Black Lives Matter today, you would not have been marching with Martin Luther King Jr. then. And the truth behind that was Martin Luther King Jr. and his peaceful um, nonviolence is what we kind of burnish and hold up the 1963 I Have a Dream speech, um, not realizing that in the Capitol there were thousands of pre-stationed um, Army personnel as well as National Guard fully anticipating riots that day. Uh, 200,000 people coming to uh, D.C., black people coming together, surely there was going to be violence that would break out, and there wasn't. And we had this magnificent gift to our country of the I Have a Dream speech. But uh, by the time Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, was murdered, uh, he was speaking out against the militarism in Vietnam. He was speaking out against the uh, injustice of poverty and the 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 war on poverty had gotten sidelined to be a war in Vietnam as far as where resources were going. So um, he, kept, he really spoke out about a triad of evils that we have yet to fully address in our country. And so he died, um, was killed, and I think his approval rating may have been in the 30s. So America had uh, rejected his um, message or the vast majority had rejected it. So. I think it's important for us to be honest with ourselves, honest with others, to do our part, to see what we're able to do. Certainly, um, Kim bringing up to speed on that, um, to certainly be inspired as Pastor Josh shared numerous quotes yesterday from MLK's life that we still hold dear, as well as Pastor Josh shared some challenging quotes too. So it's, it's both of those um, truths that we hold together. Um, I hope you were able to enjoy some beauty this day, some rest this day, some energizing this day. Um, this week with the inauguration, we, it's still uh, somewhat of an unsettling time, but um, I think what I had heard was that January 17th yesterday, there's you know calls across the nation for demonstrations and whatnot, and those did not seem to materialize. So. Um, I, I am cautiously hopeful for the actual inauguration. Um, I'm very hopeful that in the days ahead, um, we can turn to how we can collectively address so many of the problems and opportunities facing us uh, still as a community, as a nation, and, um, and see how we can continue to strive towards that beloved community that MLK Jr. was such a proponent of. <clears throat> so let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We pray that you can open our eyes to the wonder and awe and majesty that's present everywhere we look around. <clears throat> help us to reach out to our neighbors. Help us to um, listen 
to one another. Help us to um, hold one another accountable in, in the best way possible. Help us to provoke one another to good deeds. Help us to further that um, vision of your living, shalom, peace, wholeness, integrity, righteousness, justice, peace, harmony, that we can help um, play a small role in that. Be with those who are um, continue to be hospitalized for George and for Larry. Um, be with all who are suffering this day. Help us as a community uh, to be love and support for one another. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we truly have a blessed day today. Pastor Josh will be with you in the morning. And um, go out and hammer some nails or hang some sheetrock or paint or whatever habitat has in store for us. Bye-bye.